guys, welcome back to the channel. Here we are with part 8E, and this is the final part of the cockpit, I promise. And this will actually see all the paint chipping done, the map varnish, any more detail I decide to do. Um, basically, you'll see the cockpit completely finished. It might not see the fuselage halves closed up because remember, we've got a lot of work to do in behind there as well. So, um, depending which way we go with that, I'm, I'm working on that and filming it at the same time. So. Basically, um, what I've got here, I've, I've, I've oil washed the, um, the center console part there. So that's glued in now. And uh, sorry about the dog barking. And oh dear, here we go. <laughs> and basically, um, that's gone in lovely. Um, something I have discovered that's something to be aware of. When you actually slot this into the right hand side, this uh, fuel filler here catches on one of the ribs so be very very careful when you put it together you need to kind of put the fuselage side on and, and too high and then drop it down otherwise you'll you'll snap that off ask me how I know so um basically yeah that's been snapped off and glued back on again now um I've also noticed as I say this 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 center console doesn't fit on here properly now I'm not going to glue it because I'm not sure where this is going to end up in the scheme of things but um it's not fitting on there now obviously that could determine the angle that this should be at but i'm not going to i'm not going to glue it because basically i don't want that to be holding this bulkhead out of shape because at the end of the day I, I think this bulkhead is going to actually determine our engine position and i want to be able to flex it and get it right without um without having anything holding it in place so when i when i put it in the fuselage i won't be gluing around here I'll just let this sit loose, then get that in the right position, and then glue it then. Um, and as you can see, as we did in, uh, in part 8D, this has had a wash and the decals are on and everything. And uh, we've got our sort of fabric effect on there, or leather, whatever it was, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's looking uh, very, very nice. Lovely job by Airfix, they've done a great job. The seat is here. I've primed the seat. This is the first time I've ever used this, this uh, MIG. Ammo MIG Primer One Shot. Um, not a great fan of Ammo MIG problems, uh, products generally, but I do happen to know this is Steiner Res. So, and the giveaway is there. It says made in USA. So you've got this one. You've got the AK. I think that's called One Shot Primer as well. And then you've also got the Steiner Res, and then you've also got the UMP, and they are all exactly the same products, just with a different label on the bottle. So. Um, just buy whichever one's cheapest or available to you in your area of the world. So uh, yeah, I'm quite impressed with that because what I did, I, the, the ejector pin marks kept coming back. So I flooded that area there um, with some uh, Mr. Service 1000, let it dry overnight and then just gave it a coat of primer and it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a mismatch on that panel on the rear of the seat there, but um, if you can see it there, but I'll make sure that's covered up with a harness or something. I'm, I don't really fancy using that dingy thing that goes in the bottom. I think with the, the rest of the cockpit that's so good, I think that sort of spoils it. Um, I have done a bit of work on it and opened up the loops and scraped the belts and made them look better, but I'm not really sure. I don't like it too much. So, um, that's the seat. The instrument panel, I've actually been making a video today for the air scale set, um, side of things. So I'm actually doing a video which is purely aimed at, air, at the air scale. So it's basically been made of segments of this cockpit series. There's bits in the air scale video um, that aren't in this video, and such as, because you can't film everything twice. Um, Basically, this lever here, this is the up and down undercarriage lever. And in the air scale set, it tends to, to bend the tabs over and it just leaves us like a flat tab. Um, in my references, it looks like a, a square block. So I've made a square block out of a piece of plastic strip, as you can see there. Um, I fitted that decal there, which is number eight. Uh, I've made this pull knob here on the instrument panel. You can, I don't know if you can make that out there. Made that with a piece, piece of... Um, 0.65 plastic rod and then a one mil disc on the end and then this one here you can see I'll point it out this one here is a piece of um, what's that a piece of 0.8 plastic rod just glued in to represent a big button or a twist knob or whatever and then in there we've got a tiny little piece of 0.3 wire which is like a, a calibration um, turning knob whatever and then we've got the lever there 
which is supplied in the set. I've left all the masking in the dials in case I'd scratch it and have to do any more painting. Um, I may actually put a cover matte varnish down here to dull all that down a bit because that deco looks a bit shiny. Um, so that's that. I've also these tanks. This is these are both of them here. This is the tank that locates in here. Just yeah, in, in the instructions, Airfix tell you to paint that red. Probably thinking it's a fire extinguisher. Um, it actually should be black. It, it is apparently an emergency backup system, which is operated by this lever here for the undercarriage. They pull that lever, and that is an emergency charge to get the undercarriage lowered. Um, just in case they lose all the other hydraulic power or whatever. So I don't know if it's filled with air or oil or, or what it is. Um, I also noticed in all my shots, there is supposed to be a big round disc on the end of it or something, um, but it doesn't. It, the kit doesn't have it. Uh, it's a bit of a shame it's missing because it is pretty visible. Um, I'm not going to worry about it on this one. Maybe if I do another super detailed one, we'll, we'll see. Um, but... Uh, yeah, that's something that could be worth um, could be worth looking at. Maybe I'll make one and make a resin casting of it. Hmm. We'll see. Um, but yeah, there's also a panel here that needs to be replaced. Just in here, well, it needs to be fitted. There's a there's a square panel. It's actually available in the Eddard set. Um, so that's something else that could be done. So there we go. Um, that's the start of part A E. And what I'll do, that's part 8E, sorry. And what I've got to do now is get on with getting this paint chipped. Um, this one, I'm going to do paint chipping post paint. The FAA one, I'll do paint chipping with the hairspray. So um, you'll get to see with a wet brush and using the end of tweezers and stuff like that, scratching the paint off. This one, I'm actually going to apply the chipping onto it. Now, chipping is not my greatest skill. So some people may say, oh my God, that's awful. But... Um, I'll, I'll try and make it look good and um, what I think I'm going to do is use enamel paint for my chipping before I put a flat coat on and that way if it does look awful I can just get some thinners on a on a um, on a cotton bud and just remove it so or, or basically take it down a bit so uh, let's get on with that okay so I'm going to use a few little different um, ways here of uh, of doing the chipping um, as I say, it's not my strongest point, but, you know, I'm learning and you can learn with me. Um, what I've got here is a piece of fine sponge. This is just like a piece of sponge like this. And I've got it in my tweezers and I've ripped it off. So I've got sort of a point, pointy shape on the end. You can see there. OK, and then what I'm doing is dipping it in the paint. This is um, Humber, um number 56, I think it is. It's like a silver enamel. And then I'm going over here onto a piece of paper towel. I'm just removing it so it's almost like dry brushing but I'm leaving a bit more on the sponge you can see as you push it harder more comes off and then I'm just going to gently just dab it in the area where the pilot's feet would be just in front of the rudder pedals and it will give the effect of the paint chipping but also wearing off now if you just want to do a chip like I'll show you in a minute you would just do this once or two or three times but if you keep doing it, you will actually lay the paint on and it kind of takes on a, a sort of faded out sort of look where the chipping is in the middle. Now, you've got to realise that the chipping would not be down in the in the corner because his feet wouldn't get down in there with his boots on. So this is kind of realistic in a way. And you can see I've still got paint coming off. And this is one of the beauties of using enamels for this sort of thing. The trouble with acrylics is they dry so fast. They're not they're not friendly for weathering effects at all. So I need to get in there and if I do touch that handle I'll have to touch it up again with some black because we don't want to chip the rubber do we? So there we go. We've got the we've got a chipped effect down there now and it's just sort of trying to show that the That the floor is worn out in the area. I'll use some other colours as well, go over the top, and I'll do some dry brushing too. Um, I also want to do some chipping down here, where, you know, his feet may fall from time to time, and things get dropped. But remember, this isn't going to be heavily weathered. This is this is going to be like a fairly newish aircraft. It's only got a few hours under its belt. The, the other one, the FAA, will be, as I say, 
beat to hell. So that will be really scratched up and, and everything. So there we go, get that chipping effect in there and you can see the down on those rudder guides. Got the chipping effect there. Now, when I come to do stuff like the control column, I'm just going to use like a single couple of dabs. Like so, because I don't want to really chip the living daylights out of the control column. It, it would be ch chipped because the harnesses would fall into it when they get in and out and it'd kick it, getting in and out and stuff. So yeah, it'd be chipped, but nothing terrible. And those corners there would be chipped as well. And then the rudder pedals on the faces, they would also be chipped. Okay, and these edges here, certainly the top of this handle would be very chipped because of the harnesses. You know, when they get out, they just chuck the harnesses off and it would uh, it would hit the top of that. And there'd be probably practically no paint left on it at all. Okay, so that's all done now. I've done all the chipping. Um, it's not my best, as I say, it's not my best skill, but uh, it's it's enough. I, I, as I say, this aircraft is not going to be beaten up at all. It's going to be very, very lightly weathered. Tiny bit of chipping around the gun bays and stuff like that, and that's about it, really. Um, if you remember in the last part, we talked about this AK colour, this US um, interior green. It's a real colour number RC262, and it's, um, it's actually... A lot lighter than the the guns you can see the difference in color there so I thought it'd be a perfect tool for dry brushing so what I'll do is just take most of the paint off the brush I'm not gonna really go mad but I could just now dry brush the green parts of the cockpit and make them stand out and also it will settle down will tone down the, the silver where I've done the dry brushing and the paint chipping so this will just highlight all the green areas and make it all, it, you know, it's not actually technically correct, but it's artistically desirable in my opinion. There we go. So you can, I don't know if you can see, but there is a very subtle difference in tonality around the edges now and it sort of makes the, the oil wash that was there sort of pop out more. So do some more on this side. Start in an invisible area just to make sure we're not too, there's too much on there. And you can see that what it does is just bringing out all the areas where We've got detail and we just want to make it pop. I'm not worried about these seals because I'm going to have to paint them again anyway because if you remember I did notice there's one thing that's lacking on this kit is any detail here. Um, if you have your canopy open it's going to look awful because that there there's like a, a metal ridge. These two lines here should carry along so they're going to have to be replicated. Add a bit, bit of a sparkle to the black panels there. Okay, so there we go. That's the, uh, that's that side done, and you can see that the, the lighter colour along with the paint chipping, just sort of, makes the edges just stand out. So we'll do the same on the, uh, on the actual cockpit floor and bulkhead. Again, go into an invisible area first. Yeah, that's fine. So now we can just run over here. And I'll just pick up all those rivets, those pipes. Any features, any edges, it'll just pick them up. 
and you can see I've previously dry brushed these with silver but now this is going to tone them down and then I'm going to go over here where I've done the paint chipping and just break that up a little bit with this light, lighter colour and you can see it gives the effect of wear a lot better Now, here's something where you could use a bit of artistic license. It's very dark down in these sides of the cockpit. So you can actually now just give these a very wet dry brushing just to highlight them and draw your eye to them. And that will make them sort of stand out a bit better. Okay, I'll have to give that one a wash again because I've managed to... Uh, get some green on the black and I'm going to lightly dry brush down here stipple some more into here There we go. I think we can pretty much call that done for the dry brushing. As you can see what it does it just makes it all just come out just come out like 3d you can see those pipes are now much more prominent than they were because they've got the green and the wash behind they've got the darker green down the side and then just this very light sort of dry brushing over the top of them okay so that's that done Right, so this time I'm going to give this a wash now and this is actually a colour called Starship Filth and it comes in this set here which is the um, Abtalung 502 and uh, yeah it's very very nice stuff um, it's a very good colour to use for any machinery it's a uh, it, it's like no other colour it's like a grey you can see it there it's, it's, and then it's mixed sort of five percent with um, enamel th or the odourless thinners so yeah it's a, it's a it's a great color to use in machinery so i'm going to put some down in these pipes and it should just run along and it's sort of a little it's, it's more subtle than the black but it's it's sort of more more in your face than the grey. It's almost like a, a sort of metallic, like a gunmetal colour. It's it's a it's extremely good for for um, for anything mechanical. You can just play with it in there, you see, and get it to go in. Because the thing is, this was carrier based, so. It's going to be kind of you know it's not going to be very dirty because the the pilot would have basically walked on the carrier deck where there was no real mud or anything there would have been salt spray and stuff but I'm sure the decks were kept relatively clean um, it'd be nothing like a land-based aircraft So I'm, I'm kind of assuming it would be too much on there. Yeah, 
I'm assuming it would be kind of, if anything, dusty rather than uh, rather than dirty. So can't really go too mad with all this. You can see it's extremely subtle. I'm just going to pop some along these rivets here. Keep it away from that leather because obviously leather isn't metallic, so it wouldn't take on a a metallic wash at all. Let's put some wash right in there. Some down in here. And on that lever, because that's a little mechanism in there. Get some of the top as well. Some down in there, around that piece there. And there we go. Um, you can see now it's sort of highlighted the the rivets because they've got like a, that lighter colour green dry brushed on them. Then they've got the darker wash around them. So it kind of makes everything pop. And once it's got a flat coat on it, it will all look much better, I can assure you. But you can see down here we've got a build up of that starship filth and it just looks like a sort of grimy, sort of just a dirty area, you know, where something might have been spilt and mopped up or whatever that's just the residue that was there um i've just seen i've got a brush bristle or brush a bristle or something there it looks like it's actually dried onto the surface by the look of it let's get a cocktail stick as if i can get it off it's kind of left a, a mark behind oh well that was a scratch that was where he dropped his watch um, so there we go. So uh, yeah, happy with that. Now we need to wait for the seat to sort itself out and then I can get on and get this thing finished. Okay then guys, I've noticed the uh, the light is um, going crazy on here. It's like, like if I do that, watch how it changes colour. Look, see how the, 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 this area here looks all sorts of chromate green and then I go like that and it's like, oh, shadow again. <laughs> so I don't really know what's going on there, but uh, never mind. Um, but I've always closed up soon, so it won't be a problem. So cockpit's getting there now. I've just taken the covering off the instrument dials. You can see we've got a bit of chipping, and I've given it a bit of a dry brush with some grey. I've also added this decal here, number three, in the Airfix kit. That's not in the Airscale set, so I've put that one on there. Um, I've added a couple more little buttons and knobs and stuff on the instrument panel. So if I can get the camera to focus, get you nice and close up on there, you can see the instrument panel looking... Uh, Quite realistic, I think. Even if it is inaccurate for an F5, for a Dash 5, I don't care. I think it looks awesome. Um, I think it looks better than the plastic equivalent anyway. So, there we go. Um, there's my resin fuel tank that I've made. Um, as you can see, it's got the sort of rubbery finish on it, <laughs> sort of, um, which is moulded into it. Uh, these, I believe these were covered in black rubber. I, 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 I can find no reference and no one who can tell me any different so if you do different let me know but if after if it's after I've put it in please don't tell me um, so basically uh, I've got to glue this in now into the cockpit floor and that's going to go in like so like that and it fits straight in if you have got one of these the back edge butts up against that ledge on the floor there and then that little, the little cut out there goes around that and obviously you've got these two notches here which go over the the two wedges there so I just blow the dust out of there blow the dust off of there what I'm going to do is very unusual I do this I'm going to put some super glue on here straight out of the tube or straight out of the bottle should I say and if it does come loose it doesn't matter because it won't fall out in fact you, if you've built your model you can't get it in so there we go let's just stick that down like that and that's down and in place now. So just 
hold that, let that go off. That's in. And for those that wonder, because I always get asked what I use, this is um, Expo high quality super glue. I like this stuff because as you see there, it says sets in five to six seconds. As it gets older, it, that extends, but the glue doesn't lose its, its stickiness. Um, some of the glues I found as they get older, they get thicker and they tend to just not go off. And then when they do go off, they haven't got much adhesion. Um, I find with this stuff, I, I don't know, I, I, I should imagine there's only about three or four manufacturers of this stuff in the world. Um, but this, this stuff I find as it goes, gets old, it doesn't go thick. Um, it still works really well. It just takes longer to dry. So that can work to your advantage. So there we are. That's that in place. Um, as you can see, this has had a, a wash in behind here. So basically when you actually look at this now, um, not doing a sales pitch here, but just to show you what it's all about. As I say, we've got to be very careful that we don't break off that fuel filler because it gets caught underneath that rib or on top of the rib, sorry, should I say, when it should be underneath it. So basically, this is what it is. You, when you look up through that access hatch in the bottom of the fuselage, you'll see that rather than just a big open space. So that's what that fuel tank end is for. Um, and they, as I say, they're available from me at uh, Nigel's modeling bench at gmail.com. Just send me an email, tell me whereabouts in the world you are, and I'll send you a, uh, the price. And um, I've made quite a few. I've broken down the list now. So there's already available. I also got them on eBay if you want to pay more money than, uh, than I charge for them. So the seat is also painted. Um, that's been done in Viejo purely for speed. And as you can see on the bottom, what I did, it worked. I floated some. Um, some Mr. Service 1000 and I just let it set. Then I sprayed some primer over it and now all those sanding marks and the ejector pin marks and that have all disappeared. Um, I've also discovered that thing I've been calling a dinghy all the way through this build is actually a parachute, which makes me not want to use it even more because if it was a parachute, it wouldn't be the perfect square shape. And what they've done, they've made it, where is it? It's here somewhere, there it is. They've made it this perfect square shape Okay, which is absolutely fine. Perfect shape to fit in the seat pan, but it's too wide, it's too narrow. It, it wouldn't be like that in real life. It would be touching the side, surely. So, um, yeah, I don't know what they were thinking of there. Still, not going to use it. This one didn't have a parachute in it. Um, parachute had gone off to be checked because it had a hole in it, or the pilot dropped a cigarette in the seat and burnt a hole in the parachute. There we go, that's the, that's the excuse. Yes, pilots did smoke in these things. So um, once that's sort of gone off, I can do a bit of chipping on there and then we can get the harnesses on and get the seat in. And then we can really start getting this cockpit wrapped up. OK, so I've done a bit now uh, off camera. I've actually, um, the, the seat's dried. I've chipped it up and everything. I haven't bothered varnishing it yet because I've got to do the belts. Now I've attached the lap belts at the uh, root ends. So that's easier with the seats off in your hand. And then to fit these HGW belts, if you remember, if you go back to part A, I actually cut away the plastic belts from this rail and then glued the rail in. That's done so it can all be painted and everything in place. Then what we do is take the HGW belt, put it down behind and then glue it onto that pin that I put in the back of the seat, if you remember. So now what I can do is just flip the seat over like so and fit it. Just like that. And then pull the belts up. And what I need to do, I need three ounces for this, I think. What I need to do is get this belt to slide across in that gap there, which is going to be easier said than done. So it might be worth when you're building yours, it might be worth. Um, taking a bit off the back of this rail and um, that'll make it easier to slide this across. I'm going to do this off camera because I'm going to start swearing. And there we go. We can see now the belts are in and they're just basically tiny drop of super glue. Just stick them down, stick them across the rail here, stick them to the seat back. And uh, yeah, they, I think you'll agree they look quite realistic. Now I'm going to give them a wash. Sorry guys, I lied, I forgot the process. 
The process is you fit them, you get them in place, then you give them a coat of gloss varnish, which I've done, Tamiya X22, thin with Mr. Color Leveling Thinners. So now that can go off, and then you give them a coat of flat varnish, and then you give them a wash. Um, I think the reason for the gloss varnish, it kind of sets them in place um, and kind of seals them a bit because if you put the wash on before any, any sealing up or anything, I think they do tend to just soak up everything. Just, just like putting, um, you know, like, you know, like putting brown paint on that paper towel, it's just bump, you know, it just goes in. Uh, whereas with this, it will kind of just um, sit on the surface and pick up the texture. But when you see them with the wash on, you will want them, I can assure you. And there we go. That's after a matte varnish, and you can see now they look stunning. And I'm not trying to blame him, Trump, but I just absolutely love HGW seat belts. Um, if you haven't seen the review I did on these, I also did a how to on how to assemble them or how I assemble them. Um, yeah, go take a look. And uh, yeah, so that has literally just been put on, and that is the AK Ultra Matte Varnish. It is the mattest of mattest things in a mattest place, or if you're in America, it's the flattest of flattest things. It is. Um, unbelievable stuff it's just not very hard wearing so if you're going to use it on your tanks and stuff don't handle them too much afterwards i find it sort of kind of rubs off it doesn't peel and roll up and everything like that horrible primer stuff it it just kind of rubs off it's weird i mean you could use it to a, for a weathering effect you just rub it with your finger and it literally sort of maybe it polishes up i don't know but um it, it certainly uh, isn't very um hard wearing for handling so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go mix up a wash and you can watch before your very eyes these belts just go bang and someone said they've never made one of their models pop that's popping that's how you make your model pop is by doing stuff to it and now i'm going to make it go bang okay so what i've got here i've got some black and some brown oil paint here just a couple of little brushfuls on there as you can see and i've got some low odor thinners or odorless thinners and get a little pipette get some of this out one word of advice to the newer modelers amongst us Keep your brushes that you use for enamels and oils and everything separate from your acrylics. It's, a good, it's good practice. Um, you don't want to go uh, cross-contaminating your brushes and stuff. And I'm just going to give this a stir. And somebody was asking, I think it was um, Pete, Pete D, was asking about the wash. This is how you can make your own wash, mate. You don't need to go and buy the special stuff, which is why I made a big joke about the... Um, the different cut it was the wash I was using was a black wash for NATO vehicles. I mean, Christ's sake, a black wash is a black wash. You don't need to buy a wash, you know. I mean, I've, I've seen they do special washes for ships, you know, special washes, rust on ships. Well, steel is steel, you know. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. Now, I think that's still a bit too dark. I don't want to have go over the top with it. It can always come back to it again and put another lot in, but you can't sort of take it back. So there we go. So that's that's mixed up there. And you can see one of the problems with this, you can see that the, the pigment in the paint, the oil paint, is sitting around the edges and not wanting to come to the middle. So that's one of the issues with probably because I've got cheap oil paint. So what I'm going to do now is just dab the brush on a piece of paper like that, just take most of it off and then watch this. And try and keep it away from the seat. Yeah, I think I've made made my wash a little bit too thin, so I'll put a bit more on. There we go. And you can see now the stitching is becoming apparent.
give them another dose. Just pick it up wherever it pulls. Talking about pulls, I expect Peter's watching this. In fact, he's probably making his seat belts right now. And there we go, guys. Now, I'm going to let those go off a bit and then give them another... Hit them again with the wash. Now, try and get in behind there. And in a minute, I'll bring this up to the camera and you'll see what I mean about the stitching coming through. And don't get me wrong, all of this has been hours and hours of work. What you've seen in this video and the last one is probably 12, 14 hours work. You know, it's, uh, it's quite time consuming. So there we go. Now if I can get that to focus in, you can see the stitching now on the belts. Okay. It really does give them a, a new bang of life, you know. But the other thing is these belts were fight, fairly light in colour anyway, I believe. So there we go. I'll let those go off and then I'll uh, give another coat and I'll come back for you. So stay tuned. Um, thanks for watching this. Uh, and it's been great having you along. Um, sorry it's been drawn out, but you can imagine all of this in one video would have been like a three, four hour long video. So I know you guys like to see the detail. You like to see how to do things rather than just there you go with a load of music in the background. So um, each to their own. I know certain people think I go on too much. That's absolutely fine. Um, so there we go. Um, I'm going to put some photos up now for you. So. When you hear me say goodbye, don't switch off. If you want to see all this in uh, in close up with some better lighting and everything, I'll get some photos up and uh, a bit of music in the background and you can have a look at it yourself. So um, I'll see you in part 14 where we're going to be concentrating on this area here behind the cockpit.